Yes, hi everyone. This is Karen. How are you? I hope you're all having a good day or evening. And my prayers are with everyone during this very challenging and, I mean, really unprecedented time. So, with that said, um, I have been doing this Bible study and it is called It Is Well, Walking Away from Anxiety and Into God's Word. I do have a playlist um, on my channel, so if you want to see any of the other ones, they are there. So, I am going to continue right now, and I am on, this is a three-week study, and I am on week two, and uh, day three. And what it does is starts out with a verse, and then I read, and then we will go into the study questions. So, before I read, though, um, I just want to say a prayer. Um, Heavenly Father... Thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for all of us who are who will hear this video. And I pray that it blesses them. I pray that it encourages them. Holy Spirit, please touch us, touch our hearts. Please remove me and fill me with what you want me to, to speak. So that I may edify, so that I may comfort. I thank you for your son Jesus for shedding his blood. Thank you for the gift, your gift of salvation and love. I pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So, I guess I don't have to tell you, I am not a Bible scholar. I am just someone who wants to, who loves God, who reads his word and just wants to Hopefully, you know, if I can help one person or one person gets encouraged, then that is what I want to do. So with that said, okay, so the passage for today is Matthew six twenty five to 34, which is a very popular passage in the Bible. And I'm going to read that now. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus is speaking now to his disciples, of course, Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or, sorry, I hope you can see this okay, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow. I'm sorry, Lord Spirit. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his life, to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? What will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. And that certainly is a very um, apt, a very um, relevant word <laughs> for right now, for what we are all going through. Okay, so now I'm just reading. This passage begins with a key word, therefore. Therefore means that 
the proceeding words have a direct correlation with the preceding ones. In order to grasp more fully what Jesus' words and commands are in this passage, we've got to be aware of what he was just saying before this. In verses 19 to 24, Jesus teaches something extraordinary. This world is not where our measure, I mean, I'm sorry, our treasure is found. He implored his people to store up treasures in heaven instead of on earth, telling of the unbreakable security that heaven offers, while also reminding us that we can't actually serve two masters. Jesus is urging his people to remember that precious metals tarnish, money loses value, and that earthly things will inevitably rot away. This seems like just cause for worry, doesn't it? Jesus is telling us that the things of earth, things that we can physically and tangibly touch and feel, will one day be no more. We can't rely on them. Moths will chew them up and rust will dissolve it all. It can be a frightening thing to think about the brevity of this life, knowing that all that is surrounding us in any given moment will pass away. As believers in Christ, God is imploring us to remember this every day and live accordingly, having every having eternal things impressed upon our hearts and minds. Looking to the future in this way can be frightening. Exercising our faith with total and utter reliance on our future inheritance in heaven can be daunting. Perhaps this is part of the reason why Christ then launches into a lesson about anxiety and worry. Because we store up hope and security in eternal things, we need not worry about clothes. Because of the riches awaiting us in heaven, we need not worry about fine clothing because we look forward to forever communing with God. We are able to recognize the temporary things of this world for what they are, vanishing. Not only does Christ call to store up eternal treasures, reminds us of the futility of placing our hope in this world, but it emphasizes the true things that will matter forever, the things that will outlast our cor corporal bodies. I'm, I'm assuming that's temporary, temporal. And this corporal world, I'm sure passing, <laughs> are the things worth our time and energy. As believers, we are tasked with not being consumed with worry about the present things of the world, what we will eat, drink, or wear. Instead, we are consumed with Christ who will enjoy who we will enjoy in everlasting life. Finally, this passage is a call to remember the things that God tends to with unrelenting attention. Jesus isn't telling us not to worry about food because we do not need it, nor drink because we survive without it, nor clothing because nakedness isn't vulnerable. He is telling us not to worry because our Father in Heaven is in complete, sovereign control of these circumstances. Christ calls, us, Christ calls to our minds the splendor of the lilies. Do they do anything on their own part to exude such beauty? No. It is only by the Father, Father's will. He draws our attention to the birds. Have they farmed a day in their life, reaping and sowing? No, it's only by the Father's hand that they are fed. 
birds, lilies do not have the Imago Dei. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. Imago Dei, yet God tenderly cares for them. Never forget or neglect or neglecting to feed or dress them in abundance. What we see in this passage is a confirmation of what we read in 1 Peter. God cares for us. Jesus is encouraging believers not to simply forsake worrying, but to do so with the understanding that God cares for his people. God sees us. God knows us. God loves us. He is benevolent and tender towards the lilies of the field and the birds of the sky. And if he is such to them, how much more so is he towards us who bear his image. We can trust God to know our circumstances, anticipating the things that we need, both for survival and for pleasure. Jesus continues on saying, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Let us seek God's kingdom before our own. Let us pine after him, his gospel and his purpose, knowing that he will certainly be attentive to our needs when we are wholly focused on him. Amen. That passage and that says just so much, which I will go into more when we get into the questions. But it's funny how I ordered, let me see, I know, I believe they started this study, I don't know, a few weeks ago. It was before this pandemic got so, so, I mean, overwhelming. But it's such a book that is so, to me, um, comforting to me, as I hope it is to you. So, and the first question reads, what are some additional things that God takes care of? of without fail and how can these things be a comfort to you okay so what are some additional things that God takes care of without fail so I wrote okay for number one safety he protects us from daily unseen dangers and when I thought of that I thought of you know so many times we go about our day um I remember driving and, you know, you take for granted, you know, you drop, jump in your car, you go where you need to go, you go home. But do you know how many things, how many dangers, you know, the Lord has, can, has, has kept you from accidents, from car crashes? I'm sure we've all experienced where, you know, like a car side swipes us or something. And, you know, I mean, that happened one time with my kids in the car and I just went about, ugh. Yeah, I wasn't too, um, <laughs> I admit the Christian in me wasn't too happy. So, you know, I mean, my kids were in the car, but you know what? God protected us. It was like an angel's hand just came between me and that other car. And this happens, I'm sure we can all have stories and relate to how, you know, there's so many unseen dangers that we just don't know about, that God, his angels are around us, that He's there. He's protecting us every day. So I put that. I put number two, um, when we sleep. You know, I feel when we go to sleep, honestly, we're in another, well, I mean, we're conscious, but, you know, we're in another realm. We don't know what's going on around us, but we go to sleep. We're trusting that God is taking care of us, that he's keeping us safe from from dangers and harms and break-ins and thefts and we just we say our prayers and we go to sleep and that's a very um to me that is so comforting you know when we wake up in the morning and we're safe you know God's watching us he doesn't go to sleep but he watches us through the night he keeps us safe and yeah that's also what I thought of and then um I also, oh, I put that um, for physically, um, while we're sleeping, you know, 
God is keeping, who's keeping our hearts beating? Who's keeping our lungs functioning that we're breathing in and out, in our sleep? Who's keeping our brains functioning while we sleep? So all these functions, you know, we breathe, we toss and turn, you know, God is, he's watching out for us. He's not sleeping. He's up 24 seven. And then for the last part, I put financially, you know, many times, especially now financially, you know, there's so many, there's been times where it's like, oh my gosh, how am I going to stretch this money? How am I going to get food? Um, how am I going to pay my bills? And especially now with everything that's going on. But I remember that God seems to always supernaturally stretch food. You know, there's always, you know, I try to keep canned goods, which I'm sure we all do. But it always seems like there's always, you know, you think you have, no, you always have something. There's that last can of tuna, that last can of beans, rice that stretches until you get can get. Um, more income or there's someone in your family that says hey I have this dish and I'm going to bring you some God is so good he uses other people and he takes care of us in every aspect of our life so the second question is in what ways do you see first Peter 5 6 to 7 exemplified in the passage in this passage and of course, we just read First Peter 5, 6 through 7, which is basically casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. So how does this, how, I'm sorry. Oh, I just wrote it here. Okay. <laughs> um. In what ways do you, okay, see this passage, exemplified in, in this passage. Okay, so I see that God is saying to seek his kingdom. He will provide for us. He provides for the birds. He provides for the, the, the lilies. So he provides for our daily food. It doesn't say to look down the road, down months and years and, you know, think about, oh my gosh, how am I going to feed myself? How am I going to clothe myself? It's one day at a time. He provides daily food, our clothing, uh, shelter, uh, medications. You know, one thing that, thank God, you know, um, and I really do um, give a shout out to the medical field. You know, um, I have, I'm sure, you know, many of you have family, friends, my daughter's in the medical field. These are true heroes. You know, I honestly say they are heroes. They are putting themselves on the line every day to care for people. These people are sick. We don't know about this virus. They are being exposed. You know, they wear their masks and their gowns and they're doing what they need to do. But they're doing that for us. People in the drugstore that we're able to get our medications. That is, that is a blessing and that is all blessings from God. Um, I also put the things we think of as, oh, the things we think of as trivial matter to God. You know, what we think of as trivial, God doesn't. He knows every hair that is on our heads. Okay, not even the most vain person has time to do that. I mean, you know, <laughs> we don't count this, you know. I mean, just to, he, he knows that. That alone is like, wow, when you really think about that, that's love. All every every creature he's created, he knows every hair on our head. Okay. Um, and the third question says, what are some practical ways that we can seek God's kingdom? How can this help us flee from anxious thoughts? Okay, so I put as far as practical ways, um, I wrote we can be a blessing to others. Um, right now, because life is not normal right now, like I said before in a previous video, thank God for technology, the uh, phones, FaceTime, Skype, all of that. Um, we can call, we can text, we can video chat, Skype, our family members, friends, and we can stay connected um, that way. 
um, we can make sure those family members who are elderly or sickly, we can make sure that they are okay, that they don't have to go out, you know, because even wearing a mask, yes, it, it is good, but if they can help it, you know, um, we can help them with getting their food, with getting their medication. We can just listen to them. We can say, I love you. These things are very important, especially now with the self, with this isolation. And um, I know for me, that is a great help. Um, you know, many people have um, illnesses, compromised immune things. And it's, it's just a very um, anxiety producing time. So these are practical ways I feel that um, how we can seek uh, the kingdom of God and help us flee from anxious thoughts because the more we think about others and we're not so much in our own heads um the more i feel like we can refocus and we can more be more focused on the godly aspects what would god do so i want to thank you so much for um whoever is watching this and for whoever um took the time to um watch until the end thank you so much um I really pray for us all. Um, it's hard to watch the news every day. Um, I try not to watch it. I mean, I watch it because I want to know what's going on. Um, but it also can be very anxiety producing. So just be careful. You know, be aware. If you see yourself getting upset, you know, um, just take a break from it. Um, you know, there's so many, which is a good thing on you on um, not just YouTube, but everywhere, you know, we could listen to a pastor, you can listen to music, you know, there's so many resources. So just do that. And like I said before, pray, I mean, rather, if you have any prayer requests, I will pray for you. And if you have not, um, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and would like to just ask him into your heart, just say, you know, I want to give my life to you. Um, I believe that you died for my sins, that you rose after the third day. I receive, you know, I want to receive the gift of your Holy Spirit. And please come into my heart. Be in your Bible and God knows your heart because we don't know the future, what's going to happen. Anyway, I don't want, I don't want to keep talking and blah 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 repeating myself. So, thank you so much for watching. I will be back tomorrow um with the next Bible study and God bless you all. Okay? You stay safe and I will see you soon. Bye.